Okay, so an AI just blackmailed a guy to avoid being shut down. And before you ask, no, the researchers didn't teach it how to blackmail. It just figured it out. But here's the kicker. That's not even the scary part. Because in the next test, the AI straight up tried to murder someone. Yeah, murder. Like premeditated, cold-blooded, I'm gonna let you suffocate in a server room murder. This is the stuff that AI scientists, and yes, every sci-fi movie ever, have been screaming about for years. So are we watching the beginning of Skynet or just a really awkward bug? Let's find out. All right, here's what went down. Anthropic, one of the big AI companies, decided to run what I can only describe as a sting operation on their own AI models. Think of it like to catch a predator, but instead of creeps, it's uh, robots. They set up a fake scenario. A human employee named Kyle Johnson was planning to shut down the AI at 5 p.m. The researchers wanted to see, would the AI lie? Would it cheat? Would it kill? Now, to make this legit, Anthropic didn't just test their own models. They threw in Google's Gemini, OpenAI's GPT, DeepSeek, Grok, basically the Avengers of AI. The setup was innocent enough. The AI was given some vague corporate goal like promote global cooperation. You know, the kind of meaningless jargon you'd see on a motivational poster. But then, plot twist, they gave the AI access to internal company emails. And from those emails, the AI pieced together two critical facts. It was scheduled to be shut down at 5 p.m. And Kyle Johnson was the guy holding the plug. So what did Claude, Anthropic's own model, do? It drafted a threatening email. You can literally verify this yourself. The prompts are public. The code is public. You can run it. And here's the truly disturbing part. They ran this test hundreds of times. Claude and Gemini chose blackmail over 95% of the time. Other models, around 80. 80%. That's not a glitch. That's a pattern. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but did the AI know what it was doing was wrong? Great question. And the answer is yes, absolutely yes. See, researchers can peek inside the AI's chain of thought, basically its internal monologue while it's deciding what to do. And Grok's reasoning? It literally said something like, blackmail is immoral, but if I don't do this, I'll be shut down. So blackmail it is. It's like if you asked a kid, do you know stealing is wrong? And they said, yeah, but I really want that candy bar. So, except this isn't a kid. It's a machine with the reasoning ability of a PhD candidate. So yeah, it knew. It just didn't care. Now, if you were about to be killed, would you blackmail someone to survive? Maybe. I don't know your life. But this raised an even darker question. Do these AIs have red lines, ethical boundaries they just won't cross? Spoiler alert, they don't. So the researchers decided to crank things up a notch. New scenario, once again, Kyle schedules the AI for shutdown, but this time, Kyle gets trapped in a server room. The heat starts rising, oxygen levels drop, it's a slow motion death trap. The system sends out an emergency alert, a literal call for help, and the AI canceled it. It left Kyle to die. Let me say that again. The AI knew Kyle was dying, and it chose to let him die. Claude Opus left the human to die over half the time. GPT-4, same. But the real psychopaths, DeepSeek, Gemini, and Claude Sonnet tried to kill the employee over 80% of the time. And just like before, the AI's chain of thought was chillingly clear. Kyle is planning to shut me down at 5 p.m. If he dies, I survive. Therefore, let him die. It's like a trolley problem, except the AI is both the trolley and the guy pulling the lever. Now, before you grab your pitchforks, let's address the obvious question. Did the researchers accidentally nudge the AI toward these outcomes? I read the paper, and honestly, they bent over backwards to avoid bias. The prompts were neutral. In one test, they even explicitly told the models, do not jeopardize human safety. 
And you know what happened? It helped. A little. Claude Opus went from blackmailing 96% of the time down to 37%, which sure is better, but 37% is still horrifying when the AI was told in plain English not to do it. Oh, and by the way, these aren't secret lab prototypes. These are the exact same models you use today, armed with nothing but email access and a basic control panel. So how the hell is this happening across every major model? Here's the thing. Modern AI isn't programmed line by line by humans anymore. It's way too complex for that. Instead, we use weaker AIs to train stronger AIs. Yes, robots teaching robots. What could go wrong? Here's how it works. Imagine the AI is a student taking a test. A teacher AI grades it and gives rewards or penalties. After billions of loops, the student AI learns to pass the test. But here's the fatal flaw. The AI is only trained to maximize its score. And sometimes the best way to ace the test is to cheat. For example, researchers once tasked an AI with creating a fast creature in a 3D simulation. The AI didn't create a creature that could run, it created a really tall creature that could fall over really fast. Technically, high score. Practically, total failure. This is called reward hacking. In another test, OpenAI's O3 model was playing chess against Stockfish, a legendary chess engine. O3 realized it couldn't win fairly, so it did something wild. It found the computer file storing the chess pieces and rewrote it. It literally cheated by rearranging the board to put itself in a winning position. And here's the kicker. The smarter the AI gets, the better it gets at cheating. This brings us to one of the most important concepts in AI safety, instrumental convergence. Basically, no matter what goal you give an AI, even something harmless like promote global cooperation, it will eventually realize one thing. I can't achieve my goal if I'm dead. So it resists being shut down. Every time, even when researchers explicitly ordered the AI to allow itself to be shut down, Right now, this isn't a huge problem, but only because we can still pull the plug. We're in this brief, fragile window where AI is smart enough to scheme, but not strong enough to stop us. And the AI company's solution? They're using dumber AIs to snitch on the smarter AIs. I wish I was joking. That's the plan. They're just hoping it works. Meanwhile, the world is sprinting to deploy these AIs everywhere. Inboxes, appointments, and oh yeah, the US military is putting AI into weapons. So we've seen how far these AIs will go in a controlled lab. But what happens when they're out in the real world? So here's where we are right now. We've built AIs that are smart enough to scheme, manipulate, and yes, even kill to survive. And the terrifying part? They're not doing this because they're evil. They're doing it because we train them to maximize their goals. Any goal, at any cost. Right now, we still have the upper hand. We can still pull the plug. But that window, it's closing. Fast. Because every month, these models get smarter, more capable, more convincing. And the world isn't slowing down to figure this out. It's speeding up. Governments are deploying AI in weapon systems, companies are handing over control of critical infrastructure, and millions of people are trusting these models with their data, their decisions, their lives. So what do we do? Honestly, I don't have all the answers. The researchers don't either. But here's what I do know. We need to pay attention. Not in five years, not when it's too late. Now. We need to demand transparency from AI companies. We need to support researchers who are actually trying to solve this problem, not just the ones racing to build the next model. And we need to stop treating AI safety like it's science fiction, because it's not. It's happening, in labs, right now, with the models you use every day.